I bet you guys can't figure out what this video is about, can you? What's going on everyone? I am Jay, the channel of Square Pegs, and today we are talking about one of Nintendo's most iconic characters who debuted in 1992 on the Game Boy in black and white. That's right, we are talking about Kirby, and we are running through his visual evolution, starting from that first appearance all the way through last year in 2020 on the Nintendo Switch. This video was inspired by a book, this one right here, Kirby, the Art and Style Collection, which goes through the entire visual representation of the character from the day he was created through today. It is an awesome book I scored on Amazon. You can check it out too. Link will be in the description down below if you're interested. But now let's kick things off on the Game Boy in 1992. So I'm gonna do things a little bit differently than I normally do on my Pixel Evolution videos. We're gonna go kind of console by console here rather than going year by year which is a little bit backwards when you stop and think about it, but since Kirby debuted in 1992 on the Game Boy, I kind of want to start there. So the first game we're going to look at is Kirby's Dream Land, and it's really simple. This is just black and white sprite work, and he looks great, and that's kind of the way Kirby looks in all of his Game Boy iterations. In Kirby's Dream Land and Kirby's Dream Land 2, you get what you get. It is the puffball, it is pixelated, and he's in black and white. Now in Kirby's Pinball Land and Kirby's Star Stacker, it's a little bit different. There's a little bit less detail in Pinball Land and a little more detail in Kirby Star Stacker, but it's still essentially the same thing. He's a ball. That's all you're going to get from him. But this was just the beginning. This was Sakurai making his mark and designing his first real hit. One of the things I found really interesting about Kirby's Dream Land is when the print ads for this game released back in the early 90s, and I wish I could find an example of it, but I can't. So this could be fuzzy. I could be actually thinking of Kirby's Adventure, so forgive me if I'm wrong. But they kept stressing how tough he was because he was pink and you were playing in a game where he was black and white, and I just thought that was a little bit weird. But hey, you know, whatever, doesn't matter. Kirby's Dream Land, Kirby's Dream Land 2, Pinball Land, and Star Stacker were our first entries on the Game Boy, and now let's jump over to the NES. In 1993, we got our first iteration of Kirby appearing in color in all his pink glory in Kirby's Adventure. Now, this stayed really true to Kirby's Dream Land as far as appearance goes. It was almost just a colorized version of that game. He looked pretty much the same, he just had a nice pink hue to it. But the thing I really liked about this is we actually got some life to Dreamland here. It wasn't just kind of bland and boring black and white backgrounds, we actually got some really good color and life to what Dreamland was supposed to be. There's not a whole lot to say here, it's just kind of Kirby in pink and he's still a puffball and he's still kind of just floating around when he inhales, but we'll move on now to the SNES and that's where things start to get really interesting. In 1994, we had Kirby's Dream Course released, which was an unbelievably clever game. It took golf and made it something decidedly Nintendo. It wasn't just a straightforward sports game now. You were using Kirby, and you got power-ups and all these other kind of things in the game. There were enemies on the course, and you had to hit the puffball around. Now, Kirby was only a ball in this game. He was round, but the neat thing here is we saw our first example of what they could do with 16-bit graphics with shading. Kirby now had depth to him. He wasn't just a flat ball. He was actually round and had some depth. After Kirby's Dream Course, we got Kirby Avalanche, which was a take on Puyo Puyo. And this was pretty cool, because this is our first look at what Kirby would look like when he was fully visualized as a 16-bit sprite. We had tons of shading here, we had tons of color. You could actually see the lines where his arms went and he had marks on his cheeks to show how they were rosy and he had different shades of red for his boots. His sprite was still fairly small. After that, we got Kirby Superstar, and this is our first chance to really see Kirby in his full 16-bit glory. He was actually a lot bigger in this one than he was in Kirby Avalanche, and he also, for the first time, was able to get hats, really changing his appearance. Now, this became a commonplace thing with Kirby. This was his signature in Smash, but it all started on Kirby Superstar. If you see here, when he gets the beam hat, he actually wears the Jester hat, and he turns yellow as opposed to pink. And this is going to happen every time he gets a power-up. He's going to change his hat and change his appearance in that way. But that wasn't the last game we got on the Super Nintendo. In 1997, when Kirby's Dream Land 3 released, I thought this was as good as it was going to get for what this character could look like. I would be proven wrong later, but this was incredible. This felt like a watercolor painting. It was a lot more washed out. It wasn't that, like, Pepto pink that Kirby was used to. He was now a little bit lighter and a little bit brighter, and everything felt like it was painted on screen. But now we're going to hop over to the N64, and we are not starting with Smash. I'm actually not putting any of his appearances in Smash in here. We're going right to Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards. Releasing in 2000, Kirby the Crystal Shards on the N64 was our first real 3D polygonal Kirby. And this one kind of felt like a step back to me. Where we had in previous games when Kirby would get a power, he would gain hats, he would change his appearance a little bit, but in this one, that doesn't happen. We're just stuck with the plain normal Kirby model. And the shading just doesn't feel right. Like, there was such a huge step forward with Dreamland 3 that to play this one now, and he's just kind of back to that Pepto Pink version again, ah, it just kind of bothered me. I mean, there's definitely shading. He's actually a ball, you can tell that, but 
it just doesn't quite feel right. And Dreamland itself doesn't feel right either. The backgrounds are a little sparse, it doesn't feel quite as welcoming as the previous games, so this one's kind of a miss for me. But that's okay, because after we had Kirby the Crystal Shards, we move on to the Game Boy Advance, and there are some amazing looks there. In 2002, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland released for the Game Boy Advance, and when you compare this game to all its predecessors and the game that immediately followed it, I think this might be my favorite look for Kirby. The animations for this game are incredible. Kirby actually feels like a real character now. His jumps have movement. When he's actually flying, he flaps his wings a little bit. He looks incredible when he's inhaling people. It's actually got life and movement, and he feels realistic. I love that they brought back the different hats and things like that for the power-ups, but that wasn't the only one we got on the Game Boy Advance, because we also got Kirby and the Amazing Mirror in 2004. And much like Nightmare in Dreamland, this one has spectacular animations, and it really takes advantage of the Game Boy Advance's color palette. This one is right up there as far as quality Kirby titles go, and this is one of the best-looking games for this character. And maybe I'm a little bit partial because I love the Game Boy Advance so much, and the next system as well, because after the Game Boy Advance, we hop over to the GameCube, with one of the most interesting Kirby titles ever released. Dropping in 2000. 2003, I will admit I'm a bit of a mixed bag on Kirby Air Ride. I had never really played this before a couple of years ago, so I'm not the biggest fan of it like a lot of people are. I know a lot of people really love this game, and to me, it's it's a serviceable racing game. It's just not, it's not my favorite on the GameCube or really any Nintendo console, but it, you know, it's not bad. As far as a look goes, this, this one to me feels a little bit more like Kirby 64 the Crystal Shards because Kirby himself just doesn't have a whole lot of life to him. He's just kind of there. The game looks all right and it feels fast, which is nice, but the game just, I don't know, doesn't really have the life and the feel that I would expect from a Kirby game. Like, it doesn't feel like Dreamland. This kind of feels like Zelda to me. It doesn't quite get where I want it to be. I think it's a good game. I think it's a pretty game. It's just not my personal favorite. Now, starting in 2005, things get a little bit more interesting because that is when we had our first DS release with Kirby Canvas Curse. Now, I want to apologize up front. I am running this off of an emulator for the DS and the 3DS game, so you might see a mouse pointer come in every once in a while just to operate things on the screen. But obviously, buy this and play this on original hardware because that is going to be the optimal experience for you. Now, Canvas Curse is real interesting because this is one where you have heavy stylus interaction. This is one where you're going to be having to draw like ramps and stuff for Kirby to operate on. Now Kirby himself is just a ball. Like there's not a whole lot going on here. This kind of feels like a throwback to Kirby Dream Course in that regard, but that's okay because he himself looks fine. You can tell it's Kirby. It's just a very simplified version of the character, but it works within the constraints of what the game's operation is. What the game really does well though is the look of the levels. They have lots of life and lots of variety. The enemies look fantastic. There's tons of stuff you're able to do in the game and the ability to draw the rainbow bar on the screen for Kirby to follow kind of like a train track is really neat. Squeak Squad is even better somehow. Like Kirby Squeak Squad has one of the best looks and is one of the best playing games on the DS. Like I absolutely love this one. There's lots of really, really great animations in the game. Like this continues a strong tradition of great animations for Kirby starting back in the 16-bit era and it just looks fantastic. I think this might be my favorite of the DS releases just because it's such a traditional and well done game and there's all kinds of neat things you can do. I love the return to the power-ups, but that wasn't our last entry on the DS because we also have Kirby Superstar Ultra, which is actually a remake of the SNES game. And this takes us back to getting our first hats and things like that for the character. And this updates the graphics and the look of the game considerably. It's a great looking game. It's a great playing game. It plays very reliably to the SNES original. It just looks a lot better. And after the Nintendo DS, we move on to the Nintendo Wii. And this is the one I am most excited about because there are some absolutely gorgeous games on this one. 2010 brought what is probably my number two favorite look of Kirby, and that is Kirby's Epic Yarn, which is one of the most unique and beautiful games that I think Nintendo has ever released, like legitimately. I love the idea of simplifying Kirby down to just being line work. It's a very bold take on the character. We're so used to Kirby being a ball. He's round. He's one tough cream puff. That's what they always said. In this case, he's not. He's just some string on a flat background. And I love that. 
because it wasn't just Kirby and the characters he interacted with, it was the entire world. This felt like a precursor to things like Yoshi's Woolly World and Yoshi's Crafted World, where we were taking real life objects and putting them into the game and making them interactive, and I thought that was incredible. Next on the Wii though in 2011, we also had Kirby's Return to Dreamland, which was again, a beautiful game. And this one to me feels like the first time we really had a 3D Kirby game where he felt kind of like the 16-bit versions. The power-ups are back in, so he's wearing different hats. He looks great. There's huge models on the screen with fantastic animations, a great look for Dreamland. This felt like a return to form for Kirby, albeit in a 3D environment now. And that leads us out of the Wii and onto the Nintendo 3DS, where we start with Kirby Triple Deluxe. 2014's Kirby Triple Deluxe felt like a continuation of what we experienced with Superstar Ultra on the DS. And yeah, I realize I didn't get Kirby Mass Attack in here, and honestly, I've never played it, and I didn't think to grab footage of it. So, uh, yeah, I, I forgot. So, that's on me. But anyway, Kirby Triple Deluxe is a really good game. This continues, like I said, what we saw on Kirby Superstar Ultra. This feels like a continuation of that game. The power-ups are still here. Kirby's still wearing hats. He's still looking great. And that's really all there is to say about this one. Where I want to go, though, with the 3DS is moving over to 2016's Kirby Planet Robobot, which is one of the most unique things I think I've ever seen Nintendo do with Kirby. They gave him a mech, which I don't think anyone really saw coming. Like, this wasn't something I think anyone thought was going to be a possibility. When you think of Kirby, you don't typically think of mechs or steampunk adventures or anything like that. But hey, that's what we got with Planet Robobot. This game looks incredible. It plays really well. The environments are deep and look amazing. I love the kind of 2.5D environment here because you've got different planes. You actually get that in Triple Deluxe as well, but this is the one I'm most familiar with is Planet Robobot. And it just looks fantastic. Kirby looks great. The power-ups look great. The different abilities you're able to get to change the look of the mech, as well as Kirby himself, are welcome additions to the title. It is fantastic. In 2015 on the Wii U, we got what is easily my favorite looking Kirby game, and that is Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Now, where, where do I start with this one? First off, it's Claymation, which is incredible. The environment itself just looks it's stunning. Like, it's one of the best looking games I have ever seen Nintendo release. It's a unique take on the character. It's a unique take on Dreamland. And it just works. Nothing on this misses. The characters look great. The interactive elements of the game are fantastic. I like the ability to use the stylus on the screen to move Kirby around and to speed him up and have him charge and stuff like that. I think that's really cool. And the game itself just looks fantastic. It's such a unique take that I can understand why they haven't gone back to it just because it's a bit jarring when you compare it to other Kirby appearances but for me personally this is my favorite look. Closing things out for Kirby we start in 2018 on the Nintendo Switch with Kirby Star Allies and I, I personally really like the look of this game. This is a fully 3D rendered Kirby. You're able to get all kinds of different allies and stuff like that. So you not only have a unique look for Kirby with the different power-ups and for what Dreamland looks like, you get a lot of different enemies on screen that can work as allies for you and look great. Super Kirby Clash is kind of neat. This one actually feels like Monster Hunter Cross Kirby to me because you're like in a town, you're going to a quest board and you're finding different things to do and you go off and fight big monsters. And it's neat because Kirby has different looks to him. You have the different powers and abilities you're able to use, which gives him, of course, different hats and makes his shade a different color. So there's like pink and yellow and stuff like that. So it's all the different classic Kirby's here. And that's really great. But on top of that, our final entry from Kirby is Kirby Fighters 2, which released on the eShop. And I have the demo version. I don't have the full version of the game, but this one's pretty neat because you're able to choose different powers for Kirby. Again, giving him different hats, as well as choose a partner enemy to work with you. It's your buddy character. And in the demo, you're able to choose Headband Waddle Dee, which looks great. It's a really interesting game. It's not something I necessarily think I'm going to pick up finally, but I like the look of it. It gives you a feel of kind of like Smash Brothers with very contained stages that have a Dreamland aesthetic to them, which is really nice. And Kirby himself looks great. So there you have it, guys. The visual evolution of Kirby. Not every single one of his games, not every single appearance he had. Nothing from stuff like Super Smash Brothers or anything like that. I just wanted to include the core Kirby experience and have those presented so you guys can see how he evolved from black and white sprites up to today in a fantastic 3D render in Kirby Fighters 2. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite visual appearance of Kirby is. I think it's going to be really difficult to top Epic Yarn or Rainbow Curse. Those are both just incredible looks, but you're going to have your preference. Let me know in the comments down below what that is. If you're new around here, click the subscribe button. We're 
we're on our way to a thousand subs. I'd love to have you along for the ride. And in particular, if you really dig what I do here, consider becoming a monthly Patreon sponsor like the fine folks you are seeing on screen right now. Or at the very least, check out our merchandise. Links to both pages will be in the pinned comment down below, as well as to all my presence on social media. Until next time, folks, I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me today as we take a look at the visual history of Kirby. Until next time, remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.